this first ever Atkins interview, we'll be speaking to Hayden Nuttall, our Network Chair and Design Director, who has recently featured in the BBC2 TV programme James May's Toy Stories, where he helped to engineer an ambitious life-size Meccano bridge. In this interview, Ben Wilson, our Internal Communications Manager, asks Hayden just how he became involved in the programme and what challenges were involved in making the bridge a reality. Hayden has an impressive CV. He's worked on the 700 metre super high Tamiya Tower and he's currently working on the Olympic Park Legacy footbridge. So how did he come to be involved in a project to build a 23 metre footbridge made entirely from Meccano? Hayden, I just wondered if you could start by giving us a little bit of background as to how you became involved in this challenge. Well, it's all about the power of email. Um, I arrived at my desk one day, turned on Outlook, and there was an email there from Jane Shields in our comms group, and she was looking for volunteers for James May's Toy Stories, which is a series of six programmes. Uh, this one was about Meccano, and they wanted, initially, people to volunteer to get involved, although we didn't really know what was involved at that point. But I said yes. Uh, it took me about ten seconds to fire the email back, saying I'd go for it. So after you volunteered, um, what actually happened next? The TV production company, Plum Pictures, uh, asked about eight or nine companies to get involved uh, and then selected uh, five different types of organisation and we were lucky enough to be selected. The next thing that happened was we got a box of Meccano sent through the post uh, but there was a video in there um, that James May had made specifically for this programme where he outlined the challenge. And then I think the, the enormity of the challenge um, really began to ring home at this point. So what we were asked to do is come up with what he described as an architectural firework, uh, an engineering marvel uh, that could span about 13 metres across uh, the canal in front of the Liver building in Liverpool that he would then walk across or possibly cycle across. So, so where do you start with a challenge like that? Um, to be honest, uh, it was pretty tough. Um, the, what, we, what we were asked to do next was to come up with our ideas and then present them uh, in a Dragon's Den-style presentation. I did this with Adam Miller, who's one of the senior structural engineers in Epsom. And when you actually went into the studio in front of the Dragons, what was running through your mind? Uh, horror, terror... Uh, because we saw the dragons for the first time, and one of them was James May. Uh, there was a world-leading bridge engineer, and then uh, there was Ed Wheeler Curry, ex-government minister. But when I saw the three of them, I thought, ooh, this could be interesting, especially there were three cameras on us and lots and lots of lighting. And if you haven't done TV before, it is actually a bit daunting. And in terms of the, the dragon's response to your design, how did, they, did they ask any questions or did, did they have any concerns? Um, they asked some very interesting questions, some awkward questions as well, and they were quite engaging. So it, was, it wasn't as traumatic once we got into the question session as it might have been. Certainly not as bad as some of the grillings that the dragons give on the real dragons <laughs> then. And how did you find out if, if your design or, or the winning design, how was that chosen? Um, James May just said, well, you know, he'd, he'd seen, thank you all, thanked us all for coming. He said he'd seen some great designs. Uh, he then quickly said that he thought the Atkins Bridge, which one of them we called Intensus, was um, by far and away the most beautiful bridge. And he was told by his bridge engineer that uh, Intensus was also the most economic and would um, use the least amount of Meccano, which was very good for them since they'd be paying for it. And then Edwina Curry said that we also gave the best presentation. So at this point, Adam and I were high-fiving each other and whooping a lot. And then James May said, but unfortunately, we've decided that the winner is the students at the university uh, because their idea was uh, it's the only one that involved moving bridges and undoubtedly would have made the best TV. Uh, he then added that the students would have no idea how to engineer this bridge or take it further than their... Uh, architectural renderings, so they asked uh, us if we would uh, deliver it for them. So where do you start? You've got a uh, design for a new bridge, you've got uh, lorry loads of Meccano. How do you start to turn that around and, and make that into a footbridge for a BBC presenter to walk across? Well, I guess there were several challenges. Uh, the first one was to take their concept for moving bridges 
and trim it down a little to, to something that was real. The next issue was how on earth we get all of these bridges to move. Uh, and then the next thing was how do we come up with an engineering design that would be strong enough and could tolerate all the forces associated with moving. So we had some basic ideas about that. And then the next stage was, well, how do we find out how strong the Carnot is? So we contacted University College London and we asked to use their structures testing laboratory, which they kindly offered to us for a whole morning, uh, along with a technician to help us with the tests. Uh, and then one final point I'd make is that we were told strictly if it didn't come out of a Meccano box, it couldn't be used. So let's fast forward now to the day of the challenge. You've got uh, crowds lined up on the, the banks of Liverpool Leeds Canal. You've got James May anticipating walking across this bridge. The bridge is built. And there's you stood there amid all, all this excitement. What was going through your mind? Uh, fear. There were a whole host of things that were just going wrong. Things that uh, were outside of our control. Things that we practiced previously and hadn't been a problem, but on the day they were just proven to be a nightmare. So fear that it, we couldn't pull it off was going through my mind. And then finally when James took to the actual bridge and started stepping out there, walking out onto it, what, which point did you realise you know, this is actually going to work? To be honest, um, about five minutes before he went, uh, when we had managed to get everything set up, <clears throat> I thought it would work. And, and finally, obviously, you were using Meccano, and Meccano is one of those construction toys in the sort of the same vein as Lego, um, where it's very much about hands-on design, introducing youngsters to, to very early on in, into engineering. Given that most children now would be more at home playing with computer games and things like that, do you think there's uh, do you think there's a risk that we're going to sort of lose a generation of future engineers? Uh, I think the short answer to that is yes. I don't think it's got anything to do with Meccano or toys, toys like that, but I think it has a lot to do with the computer generation. Um, I'm not sure Meccano will, will help change that. But the University of Liverpool, uh, Department of Mechanical and Structural Engineering, who provided the students for making the bridges, have taken both of the bridges now, and they have the unenviable task of taking it all apart but they the reason they've taken it is because they want to use the Meccano um, in their engineering courses uh, so that they can get the creative juices of their future engineers flowing uh, and they, it's their intention to use them for project work. Aidan thank you very much. You can catch Hayden in James May's Toy Stories on Tuesday the 10th of November at 8pm on BBC2. And if you've got any questions or would just like to find out more, please go ahead and email info at atkinsglobal.com.